Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for Lex Luthor or Brainiac, and like and subscribe for better prey next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Kraven the Hunter, my favorite Spider-Man villain, which is saying something because I love just about every Spider-Man villain, but there's something special about a dude who jacks himself up with magic potions to hunt a superhero because he thinks it would be hard. I also love him in Squirrel Girl, just trying to be a better guy. I just love the dude. Let's get started, gang. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting Spider-Man. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to hunt. It's in the name, though I would also definitely be down for Craven the Baker. Next, we need to be the best a man can be, with absurd physicality to spar with a spider. Finally, violence. Lots of violent skills to be a violent man who does violence. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just watch out for your multi-classing minimums. Dexterity will be number one. Even though you're super strong, you don't actually use heavy weapons. Hunting game with a great axe just doesn't seem very sporting. Wisdom Next, you have the eyes of an eagle, the ears of a wolf, and a lifetime ban from the zoo. Constitution after that, if you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Spider-Man, you need some thick toes. Follow that up with strength, you need a positive modifier, if you have super strength, obviously. Intelligence is a bit low. Craven is kinda good at everything, but we can't have everything high in D&D, so we'll dump charisma. Sure, he's hot, but he's also a weirdo hunter man with singular interests and probably smells like Spider-Man pee. That's so Spider-Man won't smell him coming. Craven is a human, but he gets sauced up with magic potions, so we'll go custom lineage. He's not cursed like Hexblood, his only curse is that he can't be killed by anyone except Spider-Man. How is that a curse? The only person who can kill you is a superhero with a pretty clear no-kill policy. Anyway, custom lineage gives you a feat. Athlete gives you plus one to your dexterity, a climbing speed equal to your walking speed, you can stand up from prone with five feet of movement instead of half, and you can make running long jumps with five feet of run-up instead of ten. Hunting the spider can really drive you up a wall literally. Bump your dexterity with your two free points for a plus four modifier at level one, take investigation for your skill of choice, and build your own background for medicine and intimidation. Those are going to be harder to get from other places, which is weird because we are about to get a ton of skills. Starting off as a rogue, giving you four skills from the rogue list like athletics, acrobatics, stealth, and perception, then jack two of those skills higher with expertise. That doubles your proficiency bonus with the skills. Athletics and perception are going to be my picks to give you the strength of a barbarian and virtually impassable passive perception. Those won't get you sneak attack, but if you've got another enemy within 5 feet of your target or advantage on the roll, you can get an extra d6 of damage to aim for the vitals. It's the most humane way to hunt, humans. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. Honestly, the hardest part of hunting Spider-Man is probably just catching him. You're gonna need mobility options. Oh, that's another great reason I love Kraven. Long time 2 lock fans will know mobility options was one of the original running jokes. Running joke. Ha, ah, that's, that's a new joke. Third level rogue is why we started as a rogue and not a ranger letting you choose a roguish archetype like Scout. That'll give you proficiency and expertise in nature and survival automatically. It's so incredibly good if you're trying to make a skill a gorilla. I don't like the term skill monkey, it doesn't rhyme like skill a gorilla. You're also a skirmisher, letting you move half your movement speed as a reaction when an enemy ends their turn within 5 feet of you without provoking an opportunity attack. If that wasn't enough, you also get 2d6 sneak attack damage and steady aim to give yourself advantage on one weapon attack per round as a bonus action as long as you don't move. That's a great way to guarantee sneak attack and you're pretty great with ranged weapons anyway. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement, letting you cap off your dexterity modifier before we start multi-classing. Just another reason to love my man Craven. We're about to get messy. We'll start off with a level of monk, giving you unarmored defense to set your AC to 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor, so you can rock a bear chest while you rip through a bear's chest. You also get martial arts, letting you make an unarmed attack with your dexterity modifier. They deal 1d4 plus your dex modifier in bludgeoning damage. You can make another unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one with your action, or attack with a monk weapon. Monk weapons are any simple melee weapon without the heavy or two-handed property, so now quarter staves and spears are dex weapons. Important to note though, just because this would fit the definition of finesse, that does not make them finesse weapons unfortunately, so they can't use your sneak attack. Now, you can make a ranged weapon attack with a spear, but a spear is not a ranged weapon. It's really weird, it's so fun how many weird little specific wording rules there are, but I have my table it's all allowed. You can even do a sneak attack with an unarmed attack on my table because it's fun. The most important thing is that you can now use your bare hands to fight hand to hand with a bear's bare hands and rip through the bear's bare chest with your bare hands while rocking a bear chest. That makes sense, right? Almost as much sense as multi-classing to ranger right away here for another skill like animal handling and expertise with another skill from canny like acrobatics and a type of favorite enemy that you love to hunt like humanoids or beasts to get advantage on checks to 
track them. You also have expertise in survival, just in case you didn't think you'd be good enough at tracking people with advantage. Rangers really get started at the second level where you can pick a fighting style and ooh, I kind of want all of these. So let's just put fighting style in the graphic. You could choose archery, letting you add two to your attack rolls of a ranged weapon if you want to hunt with a bow. Dueling adds two to the damage of attacks you make with a weapon in one hand if you want to use a big knife. Two weapon fighting lets you add your dexterity modifier to the damage of your offhand weapon attack if you want to use two big knives. You also get some spells like Hunter's Mark to pick a creature you really, really want to kill for an hour, adding an extra d6 of damage to all of your weapon attacks against them, which includes unarmed attacks from martial arts. Uh, an unofficial weakness of this build is you really got to know what counts as weapon attacks, ranged weapon attacks, and melee weapon attacks, and what makes them ranged weapons or thrown weapons, or it's, it's um, just like, you're going to have to Google some stuff probably. Long Strider adds 10 feet to your movement speed, helping you chase your prey like a cheetah. Not a cheater, though. Cheating in Dungeons & Dragons is just cheating yourself out of fun. Third level rangers can choose a conclave to join, and Horizon Walker is super cool. It lets you teleport and bamboozle your audience. Obviously, we're choosing Hunter Conclave. Now, lets you choose a type of prey. Colossus Slayer is the best for someone who focuses on one creature at a time, letting you add an extra d8 of damage to a creature below their HP total once per turn. Since martial arts lets you attack as a bonus action, you can get this going round one. The Monk Dep is really good for this for several reasons, people. Trust me, I've done this a few times. Since you can pick up another spell, jump triples your jump distance for 36 feet horizontally or 12 feet vertically with less run up from the athlete feet. Four level rangers get another ability score improvement, bump your wisdom now. Those are probably Craven's most frequently used skills. Not that it matters since you have proficiency with basically the entire skill list. It also buffs your unarmored defense though. Another great reason to dip one level into monk. At this point, that's the same as plate mail without a 1500 gold price tag and disadvantage on stealth checks. Fifth level rangers get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action or three with a martial arts bonus action. All of those will get a bonus from Hunter's Mark, but only one attack per turn can get Slayer's Prey and Sneak Attack. You can also learn second level spells. Enhanced ability gives a creature advantage on skill checks of a certain type. If you choose Strength, they also double their carrying capacity. If you choose Dexterity, they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose Constitution, they get 2d6 temporary HP. No matter what you choose, it lasts for an hour depending on your concentration. Honestly, with your obscene skill proficiencies, you might want to use something like Aid instead, giving three creatures five more HP for the next eight hours, helping to give you a little more bulk. You can only have four spells at this point though, so you're going to have to choose which one of those you want at home. I'd lean towards aid. Now we'll bounce back to rogue because honestly, there isn't a lot more from ranger that we need. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you have the damage of incoming attacks as long as you can see the source. It's not like Spider-Man is invisible. That would be miles away from my expectations. Unlike 3d6 sneak attack damage, I would expect that on a fifth level rogue. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Investigation and intimidation are my recommendations to make up for the fact that we don't really get to invest in your intelligence or charisma as much as I'd like. Seventh level rogues get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. Use this for your hero arc. Green Goblin is dropping bombs left and right. F-bombs. Willem Dafoe will not be censored. You also get 4d6 sneak attack damage. Eighth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Push your wisdom modifier higher and higher to increase your AC and tracking skills. Ninth level scouts get superior mobility, adding 10 feet to your movement speed. Mixing with long strider jump and cunning action, you're going to be a very hard hunter to get away from, and you can hit your prey with 5d6 sneak attack damage. Tenth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Cap off your wisdom modifier for 20 AC in your underwear, two better than the heaviest possible armor someone could buy. Maybe they'll get an enchanted set of armor, but then you should get braces of defense, right? Not that you need it. Love level rogues get reliable talent, meaning the lowest you can roll on a skill you're proficient with is a 10, followed by your modifier. That's a minimum of 21 stealth, medicine, intimidation, and animal handling, 22 minimum of investigation and nature, 23 minimum for athletics, and 27 minimum for acrobatics, survival, and perception. Not to mention 27 passive perception, meaning that's the minimum people will have to roll to hide while you're around. And when you find them, give them 66 sneak attack damage. 12 level rogues get our last ability score improvement because we're going to end doing weirdo stuff, but we'll grab the tough feet for 2 HP for every level you have and every level you get. The other stats were more mandatory and constitution is the easiest to patch up with, well, the tough feet. We're going to end this with monk levels. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool potioned up man stuff like step of the wind, letting you double your jump distance as a bonus action. You can also dash and disengage, but you could already do that from rogue for free. The reason to use this is if you want to pair it with jump for six times your jump distance, that's 72 feet horizontally or 24 feet vertically. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action for advantage on dexterity saves and to give your enemies disadvantage on attacks against you, making you even harder to hit. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with a bonus action. D4s at level 19, not all that special. But when you remember that you get to add Hunter's Mark damage to all of those attacks, it's closer to a D10. Closer to not actually a D10, I didn't say it was a D10. You could also run even faster with unarmored movement 
and adding 10 feet to your movement speed while you're unarmored. That's 50 base speed before you do anything, 60 with Long Strider, and you can dash every turn without resources to blast around 120 feet with a massive jump distance that's basically a flying speed. Our capstone is the third level of Monk because my favorite character needs calligraphy and Kensei Monks get it. I guess it also lets you pick a melee and ranged weapon to be Kensei weapons that let you do special things. Agile Parry lets you add two to your AC if you make an unarmed attack as part of your action, so you can block with a knife and rock 22 AC, better than plus three magical plate mail, and they don't really make leopard print plate mail. Or you could use Kensei Shock, spending a bonus action to add a d4 of extra damage to ranged attacks made with a Kensei weapon. If you can't get in melee range, it's a pretty good way to use a bonus action. But only if you have sneak attack damage from another source and don't have to use your bonus action for a steady aim. Obviously, getting sneak attack way better than 2d4. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're good at everything. Melee combat, ranged combat, tanking damage, moving around, tracking people, sneaking around, stabilizing people. There's really nothing you're bad at. Oh, there's a con section though, so uh, let's stretch. Your only good charisma check is intimidation. So Squirrel Girl might not trust that you're ready to be a good guy right away. You've also got limited ranger spells, so that could be an issue. Um, And you have two concentration spells, so you can only have one up at a time. Yeah, it's build rules, craven rules, hunt down your foes, take them down quickly, and be the ultimate skill of gorilla. Just watch out for a team with a symbiotic relationship. It would be a shame to go on your last hunt. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for Lex Luthor or Brainiac and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.